What's up? It's your boy KC. How y'all doing? This video is going to be about wrestling here. I want to talk about one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, The Undertaker. What you fail to realize, you see, Austin, when one understands it. Yeah, that guy. Although he's probably one of the greatest wrestlers to ever step through the ropes, he has had some bad moments in his career. He has had some terrible matches. I mean, he's had great matches with Shawn Michaels, with Bret Hart, you know. But there were just really bad matches, really bad things, and this is what this video is going to be about. So I'm going to start with number 10. The Undertaker versus the Fake Undertaker. The Underfaker, as they call him. This, there was no call for that. There was no reason for that match. The only reason why the Underfaker existed was because the real Undertaker got injured and he needed time off. So they had the Undertaker booked for so many events that they got a guy who looks like The Undertaker, a guy who could wrestle like The Undertaker to be The Undertaker. And when The Real Undertaker came back, they had to quickly make up some crappy-ass storyline that Ted DiBiase bought The Undertaker out and he sold out for money and then The Real Undertaker comes back and destroys him. You can hear in that match how quiet it is because it's so weird, it's awkward. To the fans, it's odd because you got The Undertaker fighting The Undertaker, The Underfigger. And it just, it didn't work. I don't know why they did it. I don't know what they was thinking. And then they're going to try to repeat it with Kane years and years later where The Unmasked Kane fights Masked Kane. It, and I'm like, if it didn't work the first time, what makes you think it will work again? Never learn, best thing, man, do you? You never learn, man. Number nine, Ken Shamrock. Now, as great as Ken Shamrock is, he was a great wrestler in his time, but that match just didn't match. You had a brawler like Undertaker, a big, powerful 6'10 guy that was over the 320 pound mark, fighting a guy who is a grappler, a ground grappler. And for some reason, you would think that that would work, but this match just didn't work. In fact, you heard the fans chant boring to the whole entire match because all it was was. Ken Shamrock, even though he was a wrestler, he couldn't do the catches, can't, can't, uh, catch can thing. You know, reversals and things like that. He couldn't, you know, wow the fans when it came to that match. And you just had Undertaker trying to put him over through the whole match. This guy, you know, he's real good trying to put him over. And it just, it, it didn't work. It, in, in my opinion, that match was just one of the most boring matches that either one of them two had. It was horrible. Number 8, Psycho Sid from WrestleMania. I'm going to catch a lot of heat from this, but that match was not all that good considering the ending. As great as Undertaker is, and he was in his time then, it was bad enough that we had Bret Hart coming out there and crying, I got screwed. I got screwed by Vince McMahon. I got screwed by the WWF. I got screwed by the fans. It was bad enough I had to sit through that whining fest that he was going through. You know what I'm saying? But the fact that Undertaker won his belt that way disappointed me very, very badly. Because Undertaker was supposed to be this badass, dead man walking, mystic figure that could beat anybody. And him, that I mean, it was great for him to win the title, but it left a sour taste in my mouth because of the fact that Bret Hart had to interfere in the match. You know, uh, hanging Psycho sit over the top rope for Undertaker to win. Undertaker did not need to win the title that way. That's why you ever notice when they talk about Undertaker's greatest WrestleMania matches, they never mention the one with Psycho Sid. You know they felt bad about that. Come on, man. It didn't work right. Not to mention, Psycho Sid is okay. You know what I'm saying? He's an okay wrestler, but he couldn't keep up with Undertaker, man. Undertaker trying to put him over... And stuff, his moves were, were mediocre, they were boring, they were bland. But it's just like every time I watch that match, I wish for a different ending. Undertaker was more than capable enough of beating this guy. You know what I'm saying? Number seven, Giant Gonzalez. What needs to be said about that? Giant Gonzalez is one of the worst, was one of the worst wrestlers to ever step in the ring next to... The uh, great Kali. 
He had no movement. He had no speed. He had no technician. He had nothing that made you say, wow, this guy is great. He absolutely sucks. Grade A sucks. Down to the bone like a vampire drinking somebody's blood until they die. He sucks that badly. The matches that they had was boring. It was horrible. He was slow. He couldn't reverse nothing. It was just, you know, all he did, ah! that's all he did, was raise his hands to the sky like he was talking to somebody. He was boring. Enough said. Going to number six, which I just said, great Kali. The same reason for Giant Gonzalez. He was uncoordinated. He was slow. He was boring. Had no moves. Was no kind of wrestling technician. All he did was just pound on, on the Undertaker and pound on him. That's it. He was boring. What does he do? He chops him in the damn head. Really? That's the best move that they could give him. He chops him in the head. Whoop the damn do. You know, the, the squeeze in somebody's head, that was something that Crush did in his day. He was boring, dude. He can't even walk upright, dude. Boring. That's why you see him in these, com these comedy skits where they had him dressed as a, as a tooth fairy and all that other crap because they don't know what to do with him because he sucks. The only reason why him and Giant Gonzalez got over is because they were so damn tall. The Great Khali is seven foot four. Giant Gonzalez was eight, I believe, eight feet or seven foot eight inches tall. I think he was. He was like a media, a media type thing to get the fans in, but it's it's just horrible. That's why they never made it. They had no wrestling skills whatsoever. Number five, Triple H, in his third, the third WrestleMania match. Now, honestly speaking, there was really no need for that match at all. It, it was just, you know, it, it, the first one was good. The second one was even better. But the third one, there was no need because you knew, everybody in their right mind knew that Shawn Michaels was going to try to screw The Undertaker in this match. Why? To get his revenge. To try to help Triple H win the match. There was no need for this match whatsoever. Triple H is not that great of a wrestler. He never was. I don't care what anybody says. I think that Jim Cornette put it best when he said Triple H is the, the guy that works with the guy that makes the money. But he got beat twice. What makes you think people wanted to see it a third time? And the ending was just garbage. You know, with Shawn Michaels giving Undertaker the super kick, Triple H putting on the pedigree and stuff. Who who didn't see that happening, man? It just it didn't need to happen. You could have put somebody else over. You know what I'm saying? I would have liked to see him fight somebody better because Triple H was never that good to begin with to me, honestly. This one, number four, was not really... Not, it wasn't a match, but I just... It was so bad I had to mention it. His heel turn on JR was just the the most worst thing that you could ever put, uh, put The Undertaker into. Do you want to kiss his ass? Hell no! Well, let me ask you a question. You think you're better than me? And then he, he makes JR kiss Missing Man's bare, paid, dosty ass on national TV. There was no need for a heel turn like that. Undertaker could have did something. They could have did something better with Undertaker. Come on, man. All the creativity that they had in wrestling then, they make him do that? And that was one of the, the worst moments in the Undertaker's career. Because I hated the badass Undertaker anyways. I couldn't stand the, Michael si the motorcycle riding Undertaker because that's been done to death with the uh, the cycles of apocalypse and the attitude era. So what did they need that? What did they need uh, motorcycle riding Undertaker? It was boring. They took everything that made the Undertaker great and they made him ordinary. And it didn't work for me, you know? And that's... <laughs> Yo, poor JR, man. Seriously, man. You think you're better than me? Oh, you, whether you like it or not, you're going to kiss his ass. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Seriously. Number three, two and one. I'm probably going to catch some serious heat for this, but I don't care. Hulk Hogan. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm a huge Hogan fan. Just because I say something bad about wrestlers doesn't mean 
I don't like him. But Hulk Hogan is a horrible wrestler. He's always been a horrible wrestler. Hulk Hogan is a Hulk Hogan match. Similar to John Cena, he gets beat up to mo through most of the match. He hulks up, he hits the guy three times, throws him to the rope, put the big boot in his face, and then the leg drop. That's that's a Hulk Hogan match. This match was just boring. It was just, all three matches was just, the first match that they had, the ending was crappy because he attempted the tombstone on a chair. Hulk Hogan couldn't keep up. You know what I'm saying? Undertaker was clearly better than he was. In the second match, Hulk Hogan had to cheat by throwing ashes in the Undertaker's face. Hulk Hogan can't wrestle, man. Honest to God, like I said, I was a fan of Hulkamania, and it was great with the hype, but Hulk Hogan himself cannot wrestle. The third match that they had, Hogan was much older. He could barely move because he was artificially, he had an artificial hip. He had a bad back. And Undertaker was still in his prime, and he was still a great wrestler. And it just didn't work, man. It just didn't work. Hulk Hogan was just not a technical wrestler. He had no special moves. He had nothing that made you jump out of your chairs. It was just, you know, like John Cena, like I said, getting, you know, John Cena would get his ass whooped through the whole match. Then he'd come back and do the three shoulder blocks. Then he would do the back slam, the stupid ass, you can't see me five knuckle shuffle. And then the attitude adjustment, which is probably the worst name for a uh, finishing move ever. So, you see the pattern here? They built all the hype around Hulk Hogan, and yeah, he helped make wrestling what it was. But as a wrestler, he just was not that good. He was not that good at all. And as much as I love the Ultimate Warrior, he wasn't that great either. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't that great. The Ultimate Warrior had two sequences. He would hit you with three clotheslines, and then he would lift you above his head, drop you on your stomach, do a splash. Or he would hit you with a shoulder block and, and drop the splash on you. That's what he would do. The Ultimate Warrior, he was better than Hogan, but he wasn't that good of a wrestler. wrestler. You know, that's what my next video is going to be about, real, actual wrestlers. Let me know what y'all think. Later.